So with profit margin, did you do the same thing with the screenwriting and you added the dialogue later? Um, so I'm sure there's heavy dialogue in, in there, isn't there? Yeah, oh. I mean, it's been really interesting adapting it. So years ago, I had written a feature version of it. And then when I went back to revisit it, it was like, there's so much here. I'm gonna write, I'm literally just gonna write the entire season as a novel. Um, so then after writing the entire novel, I was like, I'm gonna go back and just adapt the pilot. I love the, I'm really proud of the pilot and I've gotten really good responses from it. Um, but in doing that, the pilot has a very different function than for example, like a first chapter in a novel. So like for example, there were certain characters I needed to flush out to kind of imply that this is gonna be a journey of several different characters. The novel was written largely from just the perspective of Tommy Knox. For the pilot, we want to see that there's some other characters that have really strong narratives. So I adapted some scenes that are in the pilot that are not in the novel. Um, and that's largely to, to, like with a pilot, you want to set up an engine uh, that these characters will, will, you want to get a strong sense of the kind of conflicts and kind of character and emotional dynamics you're going to be dealing with in a pilot that will extend itself through the whole season. Um, and so a lot of a lot of that, like in novel, you have time to kind of build and explore and weave things in. With the with the pilot, I had to be very concise, very specific, do a lot of trimming, killing a lot of darlings, which, you know. So, but the dialogue, the nice thing is, is like I like it, this is about a, a, a slick uh, producer. Uh, he's good with sales. He's very sarcastic, uh, charismatic. Um, so he's fun to write. His dialogue is so much fun to write. So a lot of it was taken straight from the book. And, uh, and then, you know, from there, I just kind of had to adapt it to the needs of the pilot. You know, it's like I would have a scene that would go on for, you know, five, ten pages in a novel, and I'd have to trim it down to half a page or two pages. And that's, you know, that's, that's what the, the, the needs for the, uh, uh, for the format are. Where did you find these editors? Did you find them online and you just looked them up? Yeah, I, I, I talked to other uh, novelists and other writers that I trust and uh, checked references and um, yeah, and it's, it, it's just the process of like what I would, I would do like a, there's some uh, services where you can sign up and you'll um, ask for petitions for editors and I think I had like something like 80 different editors hmm. um, that were interested in the project and then from there, I just had them just do a quick edit of just like the, a 10 page sequence and just to see what their notes were. And then from there, I boiled it down to three editors. And then I got on the phone, had a discussion about like what I intended to do and what their experience was and what their expectations were. And hmm. yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a cool process. So are they looking at it not just for, you know, punctuation, grammar, things like that, but also structure and, and how it reads? Like yeah, that? so what I did, I went for the full package. So I, the copy editors, which are looking at the punctuation, making sure that, you know, sentence structure and all that stuff is good. Um, and then there's content editors. Um, and the content editors, uh, I went with the content editor first because you want to, those are the ones that are interested in structure. Uh, character that they need to be very familiar with uh, with how story works um, and it's that second pair of eyes I mean a, a good editor is invaluable um, especially for someone like me who loves to just write and loves to go in the deep end and I can just spend all day swimming in the deep end I need someone to say all right it's time to get out of the water so um, yeah so a content editor w really helps with with making sure that all of the story dynamics are working that like the you know those things we talked about that um, my intention was to do this. I just need to make sure it's coming across. Um, and yeah, I found a great content editor. And then after that, hired a copy editor to just go through and make sure all the commas are in the right place. And no book's perfect. And every time I read it, I still find one or two mistakes, but, uh, or maybe probably more than one or two. But, um, but yeah, it's, uh, I'm really proud of it. I think it's a, it's a fun read and it reads really smooth and I think it's hilarious. Well, it's been such a dream of so many people. I feel like not so much of this generation, but of, you know, Generation X and before to write this great American novel, you mm. know, and a lot of that seems to be, I guess it's not going away, but it seems like less and less because now everybody wants to be a YouTuber or whatever, sort of live this, you know, influencer lifestyle. And, and some of that 
feels like it's gone away a little, no? I don't think so at all. No? I think I think story's never been pow- more powerful. Like, I mean, there's definitely like, you know, they talk about the democratization of distribution, of publishing, of writing and producing and making films and everything. So um, I more people are writing, more people are, are publishing, putting their stuff out there. It also means that you have a lot more maybe lower quality stuff. Some writers, their, their main goal is to put out as much as they can um, without necessarily spending as much time on the quality, um, which is a strategy. Uh, for me, I'm, you know, I want to make it as good as I possibly can. So I spent, I mean, I wrote it quickly in four months, but that four months was the product of 10 years of preparation beforehand. Oh. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I wrote it in four months and then spent the next year working with the editor, getting it to a place where we both felt like it was ready to publish. Um, so it's, I, I mean, there's so many writers, and now this is, you know, like YouTubers and things like that, that's a new, it's a newer phenomenon, but it's great because it's more voices. Um, and I, I still believe that, you know, people that are putting out good content attract the kind of attention that, ner- that merits it. You know, it's, it's the, the cream always rises to the top. And, you know, it probably means that there's like a higher ratio of, of just total shit that's out there. But, um, you know, but ultimately it's it, it, the, the good stuff still comes through and, you know, it, it can happen naturally or virally. I know distributors are working really hard at trying to market stuff. But, you know, if it's shit, it's shit. And if it's not, then it gets some attention. When you finished Profit Margin, did you feel almost sad? Did you feel a depression, like a postpartum yes. depression? We were talking about, yeah, like yeah. your baby's out there and graduated and... Well, the first thing that happened is I fucking hated it. Because oh, <laughs> I finished it and I was like, I just wasted, I've been, I loved this story for so long, I finished it and then I was like, that's all it was? I've, it's something personal. Every project, as soon as I finish it, mm-hmm. I gotta get away from it because I'm like sick of it. Right. And I think like, oh, that's all it was. Because it's, you know, in your mind, you build it up and it's, it's going to do all these different things. So the, I did the, you know, the right thing is I got away from it and I just put it away. And then a couple months later, I went back and I'm like, all right, you're a little bit fresh now. Reread it. And there's a lot of good stuff. And so, you know, started the rewrites and stuff like that. And then took it through a few different rewrites and then got it to the editor shortly after that. Um, but yeah, like, you know, you, you begin to develop a relationship with the characters mm-hmm. and the more effort and energy you put into the story, the more it means to you. So, you know, like Tommy Knox, he's a fun character, right? And Nava, who's the prophet in the character, he's a really interesting, enigmatic character. There's just, the whole dynamic, the world is fun to write. But that's true with every, every story I write. When I'm done with it, it's, I put it away and there's just kind of this... Uh, I don't know. But I mean, at the same time, I, I tend to be juggling a lot of projects. So I'll put one away, hate that project, and then fall in love with this new project. And it's, uh, you know, it's like that one uh, Cat's Cradle, Kurt Vonnegut book, where the, the scientist is like, he just gets distracted by turtles. And like the defense department is like, we really need him to work on this bomb again. And he's like, yeah, but he's trying to figure out what the nature of turtles are. You know, it's like, it, it, I'm endlessly seeking out new fascination and I but that's just how my mind works I'm constantly interested in new ideas and then I'm interested in taking those ideas and making them building emotional narratives around them 